There's a particular scripture that God has laid on my heart uh, for this message, which comes from Romans chapter 5, and it's verses 6 to 8. So while we're going through the message, you might like to have a look at that. Now, over the last few months, I've had the privilege of working at the Esther Foundation, working alongside women who've suffered trauma and in some instances, substance abuse. And as I've listened to their stories, I'm being continually reminded that healing is a difficult process, which takes time, it takes patience, and it takes a lot of love. For those who work with these women, they're acutely aware that even with the very best of intentions and the greatest human love and patience, lasting change that brings a transformation into these women's lives requires a miracle. Particularly when women have been through intense and repeated trauma, that has affected them very deeply, psychologically, emotionally, and spiritually. And alongside with this comes a lack of ability to be able to discern and act on what is good and what is not, along with being able to discern who is good and who is not, and who we can trust. Life has become about survival in whatever way they can. And usually they have been robbed of a hope and of a future. So by the time these women reach the Esther Foundation, they've usually come to the place where they face a very stark reality, a choice between life and death. And so alongside the very practical day-to-day -day help that the women are provided with, they're all given the opportunity to learn about Jesus. Because like the friends who carried the paralytic man down and lowered him down through a roof to the feet of Jesus, the recovery program operates in faith knowing that Jesus can heal us in ways that are beyond what the medical profession can offer us or even what can be offered by the very best meaning friends and family and people who care about us. And so by introducing the women to Jesus, they're introducing them to a divine and transforming love that heals and restores us. A spiritual love that we all have an inbuilt desire to be filled with and which can only be given by God's Holy Spirit. And so by reconnecting these women with their creator, their broken relationship with God is able to be restored. And for them, just as it is for us, in Jesus we find the way to our true spiritual home where all our deepest spiritual desires are satisfied. And for those of us who know what it is to be lost, when we reach the safety of a warm and a loving home that is eternal, and means that we can stop running or worrying about how we're going to survive, and we are loved, nurtured and cared for in ways that we never thought were possible, then we are healed in the presence of God. And in that presence of God, we find a new future as new creatures in Christ, as new beings in Christ who are given a new start. And so for these women, there is no shadow of doubt that Jesus is like a light in the darkness for anyone who has lost their way. Jesus is the good Samaritan who travels with us, provides for us, strengthens and encourages us, even when everyone around us may overlook us or leave us to die in the gutter. And so for these women, they know that in Jesus they have a friend who not only shows us the way home, but who will deliver us into the very safety and presence of God. 
Such is the love of God for us. And yet it is here where even the best of us can sometimes fall down. Even the very best and most well-meaning of Christians. You see, because when people are hurting and have experienced what it is to have lost all sense of dignity, worth and value or acceptance in society, being invited to draw close to God who is clean and pure and holy highlights our wretched state. Similar to if we were in a place where we are presented with a piece of pure white linen and place it next to a, a filthy, dirty rag. Or if a homeless person who's sleeping rough suddenly gets invited to walk into a high-end department store full of people looking to buy expensive clothes and perfumes. The effect, you see, can make us feel worse than where we started. But here it is that such is the love of God for us. In that for us and for the sake of all who may need to feel safe to be able to approach God, who is holy and pure and blameless, without blemish, we have the assurance that the divine love of Jesus is filled with a depth of humility that is willing to stand with us in our mess and who has embraced and absorbed the greatest imperfections of hu humanity so that we are made clean and set free from all that's prevented us from being restored into relationship with God, our Heavenly Father. A love that's reached down from heaven and which gently and tenderly holds all those who respond to God's invitation to return home. A love that was willing to suffer the ultimate rejection, humiliation, shame, torture and poverty for our sake. So that no matter how deep our pain, or our lack of confidence to draw close, or our shame, God has left us with no reason to stay away. You see, it's here at the cross that God who is holy and pure and righteous and blameless made himself nothing. And he withheld nothing from us. He withheld nothing good from us. By offering himself completely for us so that we might live with him in his kingdom and know what it means to dine with him at his table as his children in a kingdom that is governed and ruled by divine love. Love that will never fail and which will last forever. In 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 13, we're taught love never fails. Where there are prophecies, they will cease. Where there are tongues, they will be stilled. Where there is knowledge, it will pass away. But these three will remain. Faith, hope and love. And the greatest is love. And so it is in the evidence of the cross where we find the foundation of the Christian faith and the physical and spiritual evidence for all time of God's great love for the world, for us. 
And as the writer of Romans says, you see at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man. Though for a good man, someone might possibly dare to die, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And just like the women who are led to Jesus because they need help, whether or not we appreciate it, we all need God's help too. And in some way, we have all failed to appreciate that our view of God has been distorted. And in some way, at some time, we have all tried to go our own way and we have all rejected the love of God. But here's the good news. As the writer explains, it is while we were still sinners that God demonstrated his love for us through Christ who died for us so that we would be delivered from darkness into life, from death into life. And the other important aspect of this is that God didn't wait until we got it. God's actions weren't dependent on waiting for us to say sorry before he died for us. Jesus stepped up and reached out while we were still in darkness, while we were still living in ignorance, and while we were still unclean and powerless to help ourselves. And in this way, God made it easy for us all to return to him, no matter who we are, what we are, or what we have done. And in Jesus, we are wonderfully and gloriously forgiven. Which reminds me of an occasion when a family member finally accepted a dinner invitation after many years because they decided in their words to drop the hatchet, which is an English expression for someone who no longer wishes to hold on to a grudge. And sometimes our actions towards God can be a bit like this family member who failed to see that their ability to share a meal with the host was not because they had finally chosen to drop the hatchet, but because the host had first needed to forgive them. You see, unless the host had forgiven them, there would not have been a long-standing gracious invitation to share a meal at their table. The question then for us is, are we willing to receive God's forgiveness? Knowing that he died for us. Are we willing to believe that Jesus died for us in our place so that our relationship with God could be restored? so that we can be returned to our true spiritual home. Because in Christ, such is the love of God for us, that we are all inclusively invited to return to our true spiritual home. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you for the gospel. We thank you for your great love for us, your great mercy and your forgiveness. And Father, if there is anyone that has heard this message today, Lord, that has been touched and has a desire, Lord, to return to you, may they know that in Jesus the way has been made for them to return home. In Jesus' name, amen. Such is the love that is given for me. That